Today's talk about three key tips to blowing up your strength after going through an injury. If you're not making progress because you're coming back from an injury, it's important to identify what type of injury you're going through. An acute injury is usually an injury that you hurt yourself in process of doing something, such as a disc injury, horn muscle, something that completely takes you out of commission right away, which could range from being super severe to less severe that might directly or indirectly affect your training. Now, in my case, I had a pretty severe overuse injury, which led to me having pain in my hips, virtually doing anything when I drove it gave me pain when I sat down it gave me pain affecting my life outside of the gym but I was hard-headed and I still want to get better because aside from just not being a good power lifter there's not much you could do if you're having bursitis pain you can't really do any light compound movements machine free weights and I had severe chicken legs so I didn't want to live the chicken leg life anymore so once you identify what injury you have it's important to be realistic but there seems to be one common theme between injuries is that the longer rest you have the better you tend to get and not rushing it tends to be a great idea but there comes a time where you give your body all the rest that needs but things don't get better when you return back to training so of course do rehab training training that specifies for your issue whether you have disc injury a bracing issue whether you have bursitis which is often less clear cut for what's going wrong it's inevitable that you're going to have discomfort when returning to training now the threshold of discomfort is very important to monitor because you don't want to go to a threshold of 10 on 10 every session that you're training especially if you're trying to get better and not experience pain in training so at the same time you don't want to go too easy where you're not pushing your body and and that you can never really build back to where you're at because you're afraid of the littlest amount of discomfort, I would say there's a threshold. I made sure that the pain threshold stayed within five to seven at max seven. And when it was seven, I did take deloads so that area would be less inflamed. Now, while injuries definitely play a role in whether or not you make progress, the second tip is that you need to identify what the weakest link in the chain is, meaning that your strength potential might be restricted to a particular muscle group, mobility, and stability. Now, oftentimes technique doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but you know there is a problem with your technique and you don't address it this training cycle but you might never address it in any training cycle you could eventually get injured back to point number one and so it's important to be proactive with deficiencies in your training my biggest issue was a lack of stability at the bottom of my squat I'd lose balance I'd lose tightness and I wouldn't feel very comfortable hitting depth and that still is an issue to today but it got significantly better with the changes I made which I also believe that lack of stability created more pain for my bursitis as I would shift more towards one hip versus the other and so something as simple as fixing ankle mobility or being conscious of ankle mobility so I could force more knee flexion and do particular movements such as a unilateral Bulgarian split squat alongside tempo high bar has allowed my hip to take a break because I would force knee flexion taking the emphasis off the hip joint which would not only create better quad development but would also create better stability for which would be my quote unquote sticking point at the bottom of the squat and because I was going through this bursitis pain flare-ups would also get really bad so I had to take a step back from doing compound movements with my leg muscles and what also helped a lot would be isolating these targeted stability muscles such as the adductors in my squat training the adductors directly and doing less compound leg machines actually served a huge benefit for my precise to get better if you are injured. Something simple like that could play a big role. So I would definitely say making your programs on point by doing less compound movements and specializing your training to a flaw could simply improve the quality of your training. Now the last tip, which is obviously the most important tip, it's the mindset. Stay persistent and acknowledge the process. Now, a lot of us want to get back to training after getting injured or want to get back into training after taking a long layoff from strength training, which usually results in too much fatigue in too short of a period of time, eventually resulting in injury or lack of training momentum. Then people start dropping excuses. Oh, I'm not meant for strength training. I'm not good at squatting. I'm not good at deadlifting. I'm not good at benching. Been there, done that. Anyone could get good at any lift. It's just the approach that you take. If you're going to go too aggressive, you're not going to be good at it because there's not much room to go virtually max out on week one so it's not that you're not good at a movement it's that you suck at gauging the movement and you might not have a realistic placement of where you stand in your training and so what i like to do in my training is i like to aim to get better not within one training cycle but months away multiple training cycles away even if you do not know when but just to understand that you can get better if you do not ego lift and you do not push the process faster than what should be because at the end of the day it's important to recognize that some injuries are worse than others and sometimes it takes longer to get back into strength training than it did before and that if you really do care about getting stronger in the long run you're way better off staying on the slower end of a progressive scheme than pushing things too aggressively resulting in you killing your momentum in training or even worse getting injured so yeah that's how i absolutely blew up my squat i hope you like this video use code just sleep for huge supplements use code just sleep for young la apply for online coaching in description next video will be an engine video peace